Hello and everyone, welcome. You're watching the latest edition of The Big Picture with your host, Kriti Mishra. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched the distribution of e-property cards under the Swamitva scheme on Saturday on National Panchayati Raj Day through video conferencing. 4.09 lakh property owners were given their e-property cards on this occasion, which also marked the rolling out of the Swamitva scheme for the implementation across the country. Swamitva, which is survey of villages and mapping, with improvised technology in village areas, was launched by Prime Minister on 24th of April 2020 as a central sector scheme to promote a socio-economically empowered and self-reliant rural India. It paves the way for using the property as a financial asset by villagers for availing loans and other financial benefits. The scheme will cover around 6.62 lakh villages of the entire country during 2021-2025. The pilot phase of the scheme was implemented during 2020-2021 in the states of Maharashtra, Karnataka, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Madhya Pradesh, and select villages of Punjab and Rajasthan as well. And to analyze the impact of the scheme, I'm joined by Mr. Alok Prem Nagar, Joint Secretary, Ministry of Panchayati Raj, Government of India, and Mr. A.K. Bhattacharya, Editorial Director, Business Standard. Welcome to Pratsabha Television, gentlemen, and thank you so much for joining us through this virtual thank platform. And Mr. Nagar, coming to you first, today 4.09 lakh people were given e-property cards in more than 5,000 villages. There was this large-scale exercise involving the most modern means of technology for extending the benefits under the scheme to millions of rural property owners. Tell us about the implementation of the scheme so far, and what are the key highlights and the salient features of the scheme? Thank you very much. Kriti, when we started this scheme uh, last year, about the same time, uh, we had some idea of the kind of acceptance it could have and the kind of success it would register, uh, having looked at what was already going on in the state of Maharashtra. In Maharashtra, they have a system of uh, property tax being appropriated by Gram Panchayats. So it is their source of revenue. Uh, the people uh, their plot sizes in the rural Gautan areas or which are known as Abadi areas in the north. Uh, so these are mapped and to map them more accurately, they had engaged the Survey of India uh, using survey grade drones uh, that they would be able to delineate the property parcels much more clearly. So we started from there and to begin with, we started with six states because the continuous operating referencing system, which is also a component of this scheme, was already either already there or was in the process of being installed, which would help in the quick implementation of the scheme. So it was very interesting because each state had their own uh, land records uh, milieu in which they were to handle it in. But it is a fact uh, that most Abadi areas have never been surveyed in the past. So while, like the Honorable Prime Minister was saying this morning, that while it was possible for people to monetize their agricultural land holdings, the place on which they lived, uh, they had no way of uh, being able to use that to source credit or anything. So through this scheme, we found, so the states had their own systems and the, the states of Rajasthan and Haryana tweaked parts of the uh, Panchayati Raj Act, the state Panchayati Raj Acts to operationalize their property cards, which were called pattas or title deeds, respectively. And the other states tweak their land revenue codes, and somebody calls it RPOR. There are states that call it Gharoni and Swamit. So it was very interesting, this diversity of, uh, of property card or sanads that came from all these different states. So the enthusiasm just grew from there. And uh, it was like you were creating value out of thin air. So for the plot of land that you were, your forefathers had been there and you've always known as home, you didn't have a proper, proper property document. So by way of objectives, the first thing that this scheme would immediately do was that it would give people a record of right, which would presumably lead to less conflict among people. People would be able to use their asset uh, for uh, for the purpose of getting loans from banks, if the banks were in agreement, which is something that I'd be looking forward to hear from the other panelists, Dr. Bhattacharya. Then, of course, in a state like Maharashtra and Karnataka and several others, where they have a system 
of appropriation of property tax by the local rural local bodies there of course it directly means money in their pockets and a good tax which people are happy to provide it doesn't happen all over the country uh, but in maharashtra and certain states that i have been to it is hugely successful the cors the continuous operating referencing system provides 5 cm accuracy 1 is to 500 scale maps so that is huge so there is a whole world of opportunity there uh, the people can use and with the new map policy now that that data is free for indian entities we could have our own google maps and a whole lot of services uh, that could now be available i believe that the state of madhya pradesh has already moved ahead and they planned a set of services just based on the information that would be available from the cors stations it is also set to change how land records are maintained across maintained across the entire country like the state of maharashtra is already doing and uh, they have rovers that have been bought in each tehsil and finally uh, it would provide people with an accurate map for planning purposes to reimagine the whole landscape so if you are having to Uh, maybe build a block of houses with all sorts of amenities uh, if you had a record of the property parcel owned by the people then you would be able to provide them with an equivalent uh, kind of uh, asset out here so these right. are broadly the the benefits and through the year uh, that 7 lakhs and you know there are so many property cards that have already been given away we've seen some of these things happening already and with regard to the others Uh, now the scheme is got to be scaled up to the entire uh, country and in addition to the six states that we started with so we started implementation also in punjab and rajasthan while we were on our way uh, andhra pradesh added their uh, state they signed their mou and uh, so has uh, in the meantime chatisgarh and odisha have also signed their memorandum of understanding so now we've got to really go all out another um, spin off benefit is that the drone industry you know they're yes. also looking to this scheme uh, to find avenues for their resources for their knowledge and for uh, you know uh, like a whole new uh, employment line uh, because uh, the drones are going to be manufactured here increasingly so this would yes. provide them with an opportunity because over the course of implementation there are something like 2000 drones that would be needed Uh, to survey this entire area there would be alternate models like having uh, drones as a service like having drone pilots and all uh, who just in it uh, for their skills and you know so there are a whole lot of things that are happening and uh, we have to move very quickly and try and lay out the framework so that the scheme would be able to meaningfully realize all its objectives absolutely so those were the salient features and of course uh, we'll discuss the scheme threadbare as we proceed ahead uh, during the course of discussion on this show but talking about today's development mr bhattacharya the prime yeah. minister noted that impact of swamitva yojana in the six states where it was launched just within an year what were the big takeaways for you from today's address of prime minister on this scheme well there are a few uh, you know takeaways uh, as you wanted to describe them uh, for me uh, number one uh, what comes to my mind is that uh, this is a scheme that was launched uh, uh, well after uh, the indian economy had gone into a covid situation in a yes. sense that uh, on 24th of april 2020 india was very much under the, under the, the 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 clutches of uh, the covid pandemic and uh, so this is a scheme which is which was certainly a very very bold and ambitious scheme it looked at that point in time so one year down the line uh, during these covid months 12 months of covid uh, depredation of the economy people lives you do see that a department has uh, has achieved uh, it, the progress of the scheme to a point uh, where you the prime minister of the country can actually deliver uh, a 4 lakh uh, e property documents Uh, now i think uh, that uh, is something that cannot be lost sight of because it happened during the covid times and uh, the entire work uh, mr nagar talked about the drone usage uh, the, the drone survey the drone data processing uh, you know the ground uh, evaluation and everything 
was done in this time. So, uh, you know, uh, we all in, in different industries, we know how the pace of work slowed down uh, during uh, the COVID months. And when I look at these numbers, uh, you know, uh, uh, I would like to compliment Mr. Nagar through you uh, that uh, the, such, such a lot has been achieved uh, in these months. That's number one. Number two, uh, to my mind, is that uh, this is a scheme that very many, many people are not recognizing that has got a governance model that needs to be emulated in other sectors of the economy. This governance model has a, a, a structure which where the center takes the responsibility of being the nodal ministry and then in consultation with the revenue department of the state governments, which in turn takes the help of the state panchayati raj departments uh, to undertake this business. So in my view, that this is actually a true example and an effective example of a center and state collaboration for a project which will be used by the people and not just the people, but different agencies of the government and indeed, various players in the economy can actually uh, take full advantage of the data. There is a concern over data, but that I'll come to later. But let me first list yes. out what I thought were the major takeaways of the scheme. Number three to my mind is that this kind of uh, uh, land record uh, uh, compilation uh, will, will suddenly see uh, a spin-off benefit, in my view, for the many municipalities which have gone ahead uh, uh, and, and, and many uh, uh, gram panchayats which have, in, in terms of uh, property tax collections, in a sense that this e-property, uh, the, 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 the cards that are being issued, uh, which will be able, which will be used to determine the property tax, collection of the property tax, that will be, to my mind, a major financial benefit in terms of Absolutely. finally it will be with the municipality. And final point is that uh, this, to my mind, since this, this has got a GIS map, uh, yes. so while the infrastructure sector will benefit, I also think that there are many other natural calamities that can be monitored through this uh, data processing, which will rest with both the states and the center. So they will probably be, be better, uh, you know, response time, quicker response time and quick remedial action that can be taken through this scheme. So there are many spin-off benefits yes. also of this scheme, which is, uh, to my mind, an example of, uh, of an ideal governance structure. Absolutely, sir. You're talking about the collaboration between the states and the center. Let me take that to Mr. Nagar. So today, Prime Minister requested the states to sign MOU with Survey of India and change the state laws wherever needed. Since your ministry is the nodal ministry for implementation of the scheme, what are the plans ahead to take other states on board for effective implementation of the scheme throughout the country? Yeah, so um, I'd begin with thanking uh, Mr. Bhattacharya for uh, congratulating us but it is mostly the state. Some of them have been facing real challenges in this time, and yet uh, people have been able to keep the scheme going. So it is really a tribute to their conviction in, in what the scheme can bring and their dedication to the entire cause. MOUs, we have a variety of uh, laws and all that we are dealing with from state to state. So we are trying to project this scheme uh, as an opportunity for use, it, uh, for use in the way that people would like. Uh, states have got their different uh, acts. We have also the six schedule areas where uh, property ownership is normally held in. Uh, there are different kinds of rules. So how we are engaging with the various states is we are trying uh, to see the benefit in their way. For instance, uh, the scheme is only for the Abadi areas. You can't have a drone uh, fly over the entire tract of land for thousands of square kilometers and do it. No, that was not the point because there are already maps, there are cadastral surveys, 
they are not geo referenced but there are surveys that already exist so we have focused on the abadi areas which are unsurveyed so we asked states that if you already have uh, currently these areas have been mapped under some earlier regime on a different scale maybe one is to 4000 one is to 10000 we asked them that if you are prepared to ignore that and start that de novo then use this scheme so it's not just that it is for unsurveyed areas it is also for surveyed areas where the state is willing to you know just replace the earlier record that is the situation in gujarat for instance or odisha or the state of tamil nadu for the uh, northeastern states and the schedule 6 areas we ask them that you would still have habitations and the ownership uh, maybe the patterns are different but you still have habitations and if there are people living uh, then these people need to have amenities they need to have plans they need to have uh, contingency plans for disasters and such like things so to these people we say that uh, that you find out these habitation pockets so if the proportion of these habitations Uh, to the entire area is of the same order of magnitude as it is abadis uh, versus the entire area that is in the other state then we are good and to survey of india and us we are very clear that in such situations the mou can be suitably modified to adapt to their needs and people can go ahead and sign that so the likewise and goa has got similar kind of peculiarities so we are dealing with this uh, right now i also got a call yesterday from bihar saying that they are considering it very closely and so we've offered to give them we were like hard selling and we've offered to uh, give them a presentation on the various aspects of the scheme and see in what way they can use it whether it is for property tax if you're not doing property tax then it is for providing people with record of right if you're not doing that then it is for planning purposes if you're not doing that just have good geo referenced maps that you can fall back onto in and, and in any case you need to have a crs network because that has got yes. it's a common good it's got benefits across the board so that is our uh, tack right now and we have been moderately successful i think uh, assam is very close to signing the mou uh, lakshadweep and kerala have concluded kerala have got uh, like a seamless urban and rural uh, area so there it's a challenge because we can't be surveying the entire state that is not how uh, it has been costed you know uh, in the scheme costing it is only 6000 rupees per village now how cheap can that get how much cheaper can that get so we are asking kerala that you also need to similarly uh, demarcate these areas that you need surveyed on a map so that the the costing of the scheme is consistent with the kind of area that you expect us to survey so that is what we are currently busy with and we have had success and uh, covid situation is pretty serious so that's a bit of a setback yes. but we are confident that uh, by next month we should be able to conclude most of these uh, mous ma'am back to you but the scheme will have to cover around 6.62 lakh villages of the entire country during 2021 2025 mr bhattacharya creation of survey infrastructure and gis maps that can be leveraged by any department for their use that's going to be the key do you think that is the biggest challenge well i think uh, that will be a challenge uh, but uh, four years is not a small period of time uh, and uh, with the use of technology and uh, with the use of drone technology uh, you know uh, there is something that i must say that uh, Uh, uh this uh, swamitva scheme has created a very nice website which allows you to look at the latest state of play with regard to the work that the department has done in consultation and collaboration with the states mm-hmm. now what i find is that uh out of 50000 or so uh, um, uh villages uh, uh you have already done around 32 or 33000 villages by the drone service have been completed almost around 28000 and 29000 villages that drone data has been processed so what i am saying is this that if in the in a in a covid year or one year you have been able to complete and it is a start of the scheme you have completed yeah. uh the 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 drone work the processing work uh of that many villages Uh, i don't see uh, that and you know these government programs particularly get ramped up at the last 
you know, two, three months or two, three, two years or one year. So I don't think that will be a challenge in, in terms of physical targets to be met. I think the challenge comes from two sectors and those challenges would be uh, to what extent, to what extent that data that is collected is uh, being centralized in a sense right. uh, that uh, the data uh, will be centralized and to what extent that access to data uh, will be shared with various layers of government and and, 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 and departments, state government departments. And so if, as I understand from the scheme, these should be made available freely. But there is an additional point. If uh, uh, private sector companies, which are offering these drones, that data is collected, and will this data also be shared uh, with private sector agencies, for example, you know, a lot of the FMCG companies will love to have this such data to understand yes. the, what is the, the population base of this village and uh, to uh, and what is the the you know uh, level of of people, what kind of people are they? So so I think there's a lot of private sector use that I see from this data. Now that's my first challenge: is that how centralized it is, to what extent. Is it will remain with one agency? To what extent can it be monetized or should it be monetized? So that Mr. Nagar, would you like to respond to that? No, so no, you're making no, a I, let me complete my second, let me say come to my second thing. My second right, thing sir, would be that we are still as a country far away from having a proper foolproof data protection law. Now, yes. without that proper foolproof data protection law in place, it is in the final stages. I understand it has gone to some parliamentary committees, but without such safeguards, in my view, this collection of data and its use or you can say misuse or abuse, if the situation allows that, is something that will remain a challenge for this ambitious scheme. So these are the two points I would say are challenges. Meeting the physical target, in my view, is not a challenge, given the way the progress has been made so far. Mr. Nagar, would you like to respond to those concerns? Yeah. I'm glad you think that way. Uh, see, drones, uh, if you have a drone uh, team that is deployed and they know today what are the villages that they are going to survey tomorrow, so the people have to make tuna lines on the ground so that the property boundaries can be easily seen. So can you take a guess that how many, what is the record? How many villages have been done by a single team in a single day once they found all these uh, tuna mark villages ready? So the number is 17 in Jalon district of UP, a particularly motivated guy with all these drone teams uh, uh, ready and their mission planning already done on the previous day, the, the areas Chunama, they could do 17. But the average that we have uh, is about three to four between that. If you are going to have 500 drone teams, if you would have, I don't know, 15 working days. So if you have something like uh, six months, 180 days, 180 multiplied by three multiplied by 500, you will see that the numbers add up. So you are uh, right that way that uh, things are looking good. And uh, if we go on at the current pace, if we've been able to do it in a COVID year, why can't we do it uh, subsequently? And But there are lots of challenges as well because you can't push the pace beyond a point. This is a quasi judicial uh, process. Yeah. <clears throat> People have their acts and rules and they have notice periods for objections. And also the notice period varies from a minimum of 10 days for the state of uh, Uttarakhand to a maximum of uh, uh, nine months for the state of uh, Punjab. They've come out okay. with their traveling act. They're still in the process of making their laws and all that. So that is the range. And so we land as a state subject, sir. And anything uh, that the state has to do, we, we, just, we are just facilitating, we are here. Uh, to pay for the drone survey, to pay for the GIS map formulation. Otherwise, it is their subject. It is totally their business how they come to deal with it. It has to be done within the state's framework. 
it's <clears throat> coming to so so that yes, segues sir. into your next point uh, that the owner of this data is going to be the state there is no centralization oh. uh, the state is the repository of all this information so this is happening at a very good time because with the new map policy where all data is now free for use by indian entities so this is a major thing that has happened in the month of february and uh, the draft policy is already out it has been announced i think on the 15th of february and so it yes. tells us that while earlier it was mandatory for survey of india to obtain the ministry of defense's uh, concurrence or their nod before the data could be shared that condition has now been taken out so that is huge so that means if the state uh, is the repository and uh, uh, they know how to monetize this data or how to draw benefits from this data so you see uh, the states have uh, several attributes so the attributes from state to state are different so the, the the kind of overlay that they are doing on the geographical map that is available so the, there are 30 to 35 attributes for some state in some state they are um, also been able to tell that Uh, which are the disadvantaged families which families that have widows which have economically weaker sections uh -huh. and based on that they can really inform their policy they can target their schemes better and so there can be better monitoring and uh, and a much more focused approach uh, maybe better than what we are doing today and mr nagar i just have 30 yeah. seconds on the show i just yeah. like to understand what were the key lessons from the pilot project were there any disputes during the demarcation of land and has it reduced property related disputes and legal cases so starting with the last one first i don't have a figure to tell you about it is my perception and my feeling based on what i have been able to get from the field level workers but if you were to ask me if there is a 10% reduction or 20% 20% reduction i wouldn't be able to tell you because those cases are not on the radar of any national repository uh, the the revenue courts and down Uh, but yes there is lesser ill will <clears throat> so the disputes get resolved the first forum is really the panchayat uh, when they are going around making chuna lines that is like your first step in diligence you know uh, there is a proclamation that is made that there is going to be drone survey and people draw these chuna lines so people step out of their houses and see hey this line has to go that way and all my dad told me that this was something that was spared in the past and so people get in there and they resolve it so that is like the first step once the uh, the feature extraction is completed the ground truthing is done and the property parcel to the name correspondence is completed so at that point the gis maps are formed and once these are done that's when they go into the notice period so uh, again the accuracy rate in the state of haryana we find that we have like a 99% accuracy where they've been doing it for some time haryana is practically close to completion they've done drone survey in 5000 villages out of 7 and a half thousand so that's been okay. done and uh, um, so that is the kind of range that we are dealing with and uh, the challenge has been uh, just to get a process flow so that from one right. box to the other uh, the boxes that are there on our website that there is an even flow and you cannot push the pace beyond a point yeah uh, because absolutely if absolutely to be inconsistencies in data if people are not going to place a great deal of credibility on the property card then we just get knocked off our feet then this scheme is no good so we don't try and push it beyond that point and i think in the initial plan if you were to see my framework there was a 40 day period that was defined from drone flying to the distribution of property card we are wiser now and it is something now like 9 uh, month period sir and of course the focus has to be on effective implementation throughout the country on that note thank you so much for joining us so the scheme would provide the record of rights to village household owners possessing houses in rural areas in villages which in turn would enable them to use their property as a financial asset for taking loans and other financial benefits from the banks so that's all we had for you in this edition of the big picture thanks for watching take care stay safe and goodbye